Hey, Warren Buffett's annual letter to shareholders came out the last weekend in February. I was reading it, it kind of got me thinking about the last couple of years. We went through the pandemic era where we basically had some parts of the stock market move into bubble territory. And we had the shrewd, cautious investors like Buffett look out of favor. But now those same <laughs> more cautious investors are kind of getting the last laugh. What's remarkable is how much this rhymed to the late 1990s. I wanted to share a couple amazing charts with you today and what I think is just a really good lesson for investors, generally speaking. Let's get into it. All right, let me take you down a trip on memory lane, as they say. We're going back to the late 1990s. This is when we had the so-called dot-com bubble. The internet was kind of new, novel, spreading across America with America Online, Netscape, remember all those days? Well, the financial markets got very excited about this, and we saw basically anything related to the internet surge in price. And I'm charting out a couple funds that really participated in the in the bubble at that time frame, or in that time frame. The you can see this fidelity in the T roll price fund, which basically doubled or even tripled over a roughly one to two year period. All the while, you had. Warren Buffett at the same point in time saying, I don't understand all this technology. I don't understand these companies. Most of them don't make any money. So I'm just going to sit this one out. And at the same time, there were articles written how, you know, value investing, which is kind of what characterizes Warren Buffett's investment philosophy, that doesn't work anymore. And Warren Buffett's was old fashioned and, you know, out of touch and so forth. And that was also reflected in Berkshire's share price, which was negative uh, through 99 and all the way into 2000. And what's ironic about this is you can see Berkshire's share price basically bottomed out about the same time the broader stock market peaked out. <laughs> and when the bubble popped, and you can see they just, all the, these two funds in particular, if I threw the NASDAQ up on here, it would look similar. Uh, they basically all proceeded down for the next three years. And at the end of the day, many of these funds ended up down well into the double digits over this entire four-year time frame, uh, look who ended up with the last laugh with a positive return while the overall market was in a major bear market. Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. Now, what's really striking to me, if I update this chart to the last couple years during the COVID or the pandemic period, I mean, take a look at how much this chart looks like the one we just looked at. Extremely similar, right? <laughs> well, much like the late 1990s, for whatever reason, investors got extremely excited about technology. And what were the big ones, of course? We had uh, electric cars, uh, cryptocurrencies, a lot of healthcare things, biotechnology. And once again, I'm graphing a couple funds that really participated in the market exuberance. But then, of course, uh, like all good things, uh, they must come to an end, as they say. The Federal Reserve took the punch bowl away, started raising interest rates, and we've seen everything on a downward trajectory. Meanwhile, Berkshire Hathaway, which was way behind, and once again, people were kind of writing the, the uh, obituary of value investing, it's dead, and so forth. Uh, look who ends up with the last laugh over a three-year period, Berkshire Hathaway up uh, well into the 30% range, while some of these high-flying tech funds, which doubled and tripled at one point, are now down double digits over the last three years. Now, I wanted to share this one with you today because I think it's such a great lesson in terms of how bipolar the financial markets can be. I mean, you can swing from extreme optimism to extreme pessimism in very short windows of time. And if you don't have a framework or a set of investment principles to make sober decisions, you have no chance. And you know, in the two examples I gave, Warren Buffett, who is the embodiment of a disciplined and principled investor, I mean, you can see what he had to go through. Sticking with his principles, he had to go through a significant period where it looked like he was out of favor. But at the end of the day, of course, Buffett ended up with the last laugh. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. As always, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up if you're watching on the Facebook page or on the YouTube channel. It really get, helps get the message out. I hope we'll see you in the next one.